Hello and welcome to a rather messy base plate reviews. Uh, so today I'm actually going to do a bit of a room tour and that's for two reasons. One, it's just interesting to see what I'm working with down here in the Lego room down in my basement in Canada but also I need to do a bit of cleaning up and doing this, just running through this with you guys lets me know what I've got to do. So I'm just coming over to the centre of the room and I'll spin around, tell you the dimensions and stuff like that. So. In my room I've actually got 11 feet by 15 feet of space, so the 11 feet run from that side of the room all the way across there and then lengthwise it's uh, 15 feet of space. And in here obviously the Lego City takes up an awful lot of that space, so it's running from 6 feet from the back of the wall to the front here and then 8 feet across. So. I think that makes it 48 square feet. But yeah, obviously really pleased to have this space down here, even if the city has taken up an awful lot of it. Wouldn't have been able to find anywhere like this in the UK, I don't think, let alone afford it. So very grateful that we're living in a, a part of Canada where it's a bit more affordable, even though quite a long way away from a Lego store. That's not so problematic. But yeah, I mean, We've got the computer desk over there. You can see actually that's just on a kind of fold out table. And then we've got the build desk in the corner where you see me do a fair few of my reviews. Well, that is if you're subscribed already or have watched my stuff before. If you are, then thank you very much. Like really appreciate it. It's nice uh, bringing you along for the journey. I'm not the greatest builder in the world, but it's uh, nice having you guys with me and it's uh, always nice to hear your comments down in the comments section and uh, we have some regulars who are comment fairly regularly so we've got a nice community there if you're not subscribed already and want to see a bit more see what we do with the lego city the lego room coming up then yeah please uh, think about subscribing it's really appreciated so one of the reasons i do want to clear up in here is obviously with that 48 square feet of space underneath the desk underneath the table even um do tend to end up putting quite a bit of boxes and parts and stuff under there also because I've been building up this Chinatown section of the city got a bit of a mess on the table and also we've been pulling out parts from my kind of part storage here and the place needs a good vacuum so I do need to do a bit of cleaning up uh, also I need to make sure that my desk's cleared so that we can do a build and review of this Monkey Kid City of Lantern set so this video may come out before that it may come out after it depending on how quickly I can get this cleared up. The other thing I wanted to show you was, this is what I work with in terms of filming, so a Nikon Z30 or Z30, and you can see I also got the creator's kit for it, so we've got a handle and a mic and mic cover, stuff like that. But yeah, pretty good. What you might also notice just behind the City of Lantern set is we've got this Marvel set. Now, I'm not too interested in Marvel sets in general. We've got one in the city, which is a Doctor Strange Sanctum Sanctorum, I picked this up, not because I think it's a great set, but I actually managed to get this for 65 Canadian dollars. It normally goes for 130, so it's the Avengers Endgame Final Battle. And it's got a couple of unique figures in there. I've got the Thanos Big Fig, which is apparently unique to this set, and also the Valkyrie one. So I think it's a pretty good investment piece. And talking about that, where I tend to keep all my sets that I'm not planning on building, planning on using them to fund future purchases is just in here so this is under the stairs if I open it up some of you may have seen this already but I keep a lot of unbuilt sets or sets that I'm planning on building in the future down here so there's all my gifts would purchase just there I've also got sets that I'm planning on building I've got a couple of up houses that's the Disney film up uh, ready to be built I want to build that with my wife and also we might do some kind of mock using two of the sets. Anyway, also got another Monkey Kid set down there that I haven't built, but do plan on building at some point. But let's get the light turned off here and stop wasting electricity. Uh, I'm sure like many of you, I also keep uh, Christmas decorations and stuff like that in there. So it's not all exclusive to Lego. Uh, I've got my parts collection just here, not the greatest uh, system. I'm sure, sure some of you do a bit better than me, but it's good enough for what we're doing at the moment. 
And what you may have noticed in the Lego room is it is actually a bit bare. I don't really have many sets on display. The focus in here very much is the city. But I need, do need to do something about that for the future. Got my soft light there, which I use to illuminate the city, help with building and also for filming. And obviously I use that, I switch that over to the other side of the room when I'm doing reviews. I do need to clean up my computer desk as well. Got some parts there and also some uh, instruction booklets, so we'll get that cleared up. But if I move out here, we do have some Lego on display out in the rest of the basement. So just to the side of the Lego room, we've got this shelving unit. So we've got Lego on display here, Piranha Plant, a few other things, the Manchester United Old Trafford Stadium. And down at the bottom we've got some kind of wintry stuff and also part of that uh, Spring Lantern Festival parade. But also got some Amiibo there, these are the Nintendo figures which are kind of interactive with certain games on the Switch. But yeah, out here we've got quite a bit of space. I just don't want to overload it with Lego because I do live here with my wife and I'm sure she wouldn't appreciate that too much. But yeah, we've got our, our couch and then our big TV. So when we come down to watch kind of stuff in the evenings, it tends to be down here. We've got a Switch and an Xbox in terms of video game consoles. And do have a little bit of Lego in the windowsill there. So couple of those friend sets that I've just built and reviewed but didn't have a place for quite yet. I've also got a drinks fridge out here. Uh, the other thing I've got is dartboard just there. And again, the place is a little bit bare, but we have been in here for less than a year and furnishing houses is pretty expensive. Plus, just want to have kind of space for expanding. In terms of other spaces we have got, we've got the machine room back there and actually it is a finished um, room so a machine room don't tend to have it in the UK but this is where our heating and our aircon all is but because it's finished we've got finished walls and a finished floor could actually if I wanted to do a kind of diorama so some kind of scene separate to the city if we move back through there could actually put a couple of tables there pretty easily there's plenty of space um, and show off some stuff but anyway I need to actually start to clearing all this stuff up so what I'll do is I'll set the tripod up and uh, show you a quick uh, speed flash kind of uh, montage of me doing that and then we should be ready to set the robot going he's just sat out there ready to vacuum rearing chomping at the bit and uh, then we should be halfway there I think I've said before that there's space at the front of the city for another couple of tables but I think as you can see here it will make things pretty tight in terms of working space so I'm definitely holding off on that until I absolutely have to make a decision. Okay that's the room all nicely vacuumed and nothing under the tables although that's going to change again soon because to be able to vacuum I did pile a load of stuff up on my build table have cleared off a lot of the desk though so just some of the crucial things especially the Diet Coke but what I'll do is I'll get these boxes and stuff put back in under that 48 square foot of space what I will make sure to do though is not to put anything here so I had a big box there before because it does actually make it pretty tricky when just working along here and also just trying to get to this corner and this kind of section of the city over there so gonna get all those put back and then we should be uh, fully sorted the room back into a nice bit of order there we go then a much cleaner and slightly tidier lego studio lego room and i'd be really interested to hear what you guys have to work with have you got a similar kind of space for a city do you use it for a city or do you have something else set up uh, or do you go more down the kind of hanging stuff on the walls, shelving, stuff like that? Something that I definitely don't have other than my part storage here. I think it's really interesting to hear what people have got. I know a couple of uh, regular viewers have small cities at least. And I think uh, it's always interesting to hear what you've got. 
and I'm sure the other viewers would like to see that in the comments below as well. So yeah, post there if you've got anything. Something that I do need to do after I've built the tops for this ray section is definitely some facades. And I did see a tutorial on another YouTube channel, The Brick in Panda. I don't know if any of you guys watch him, but he did do a tutorial for some rock work, which I thought might be pretty good there. I'm still unsure if I'm going to do something more naturalistic or a kind of brick belt facade, so masonry bricks, etc. But yeah, that might be something good. Next thing I'm going to be up to is the uh, City of Lanterns Monkey Kid set. You can see I've got it all set up there. Something else that I've got set up just in front of it. Just wanted to know whether any of you have these books. So we've got this, uh, the Lego Neighbourhood book, which I know is a pretty popular one a little while back, and then the follow-up to it. And these are pretty good for laying out the kind of modular standards for buildings, etc. So they actually have some builds in there. And then they also just talk about the actual ways that you can set up a Lego city you know, and according to the modular standard. So if you know what the modular standard is, it's kind of like how are modular buildings built. Uh, this is in the Lego kind of range. You know, they always have a tree on one side and a lamppost on the other, that type of thing. I don't think you need to do it exactly like that, but some pretty good books. I would uh, recommend them. That's the Lego Neighbourhood books. But yeah, let me know what you thought of the vlog, the video today. It's just a bit of an update around the room. Definitely stuff that I could do. It is looking a bit bare over there. I just uh, resent paying so much for some of the Lego art. So if you've got any ideas, let me know. Maybe there's uh, something a bit more unique than that that we could do. But Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you have, please leave a like as always. And as ever, I'll say goodbye and be good. <laughs>